Happy Monday, everybody. Yeah, dude. Ready to hey. do the uh, the new normal things. That's right. What used to be weird is now just mm, the new normal. It was funny because like, uh, a, a lot of the podcasts I'm listening to have, uh, so, or some of them are starting to, to go remote. Uh, and it's, it's funny to hear them kind of figure it out. Uh, oh, oh yes. the, uh, on the tech side of things. Yes. Welcome, everybody. Oh, all <laughs> you touchy people. Now you all got to work with the Skype ducking. Welcome. Welcome, <laughs> friends. Enjoy. So, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us here while you're working from home. Uh, yeah, man. We're now the... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm now the... The most well-trafficked live entertainer in Oakland, Justin Robert Young. <laughs> Working from home. Yeah, exactly. Man. Working from home or Man, hardly at home? The, I worry about those Pornhub servers right now. Mm, straining. Straining. Yeah. Done the straining, that's for sure. No, uh, supposedly, right. I think I think I saw a headline. Uh, the uh, Steam had its like highest yeah, you, 20 concurrent, million concurrent users user or base. something. Uh, <clears throat> it's one of those things you don't really want to brag about that stuff, but you kind of want to let people know that, like, yeah, I know. Yeah, look, there's some elements of of the economy that are gonna do okay, and and <laughs> no, there's some that aren't. That was the, I was impressed at Trump's press conference. It was like he turns to the grocery chains guys. It's like you guys are doing really good though. You yeah. know, it was sincere, honest. Maybe not the best time to point out, and they're like, oh yeah. You know? uh -huh. <laughs> This is uh, this is uh, the the grocery folks who are selling yeah, out of everything. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, things uh, ever 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 locked down in this life during wartime. A lockdown, yeah. baby. Also, hello. It's uh, it's Pi Day. We we just missed it. It's Pi Day. Uh, by two days, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, today it's it, uh, it's it's uh, a Stone Cold Steve Austin day, three sixteen. Oh, sure. Wait, when is uh, St. Patty's Day? I think tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Uh, uh, we we, we uh, can talk we, about it there, but like the, now, now it's now it's rescheduled for Fourth of July. For the uh, <laughs> the preemptive hate of people in the Austin subreddit, like they're already angry at just knowing that some number of people will go out and celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And they're already pre-raging over a thing that hasn't even happened. Welcome yeah. to the internet. Well, it, is, it is frustrating because, like... I know. Yeah, you, know, you understand that this is a website called Reddit, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that's true fact. But, but there was, like, I was talking to Rudy Kobe the other day, and he mentioned somebody somebody's in Magic who we know who would comment on somebody's thread, like, I've snorted worse than, you know, COVID. I'm not worried about this. I'm going to go go about my life. And it was that, like, that is, you're kind of like, ah, I don't think you understand. 
not it's not about you getting sick it's about you getting it and giving it to grandma you know and that kind of uh and so I guess that is why people get a little frustrated because it's like we're following the rules don't you understand why these rules are there uh shall we start the show sure yep. yeah uh everybody good yeah yep. all right then take it away Andrew in three two Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Justin Robert Young. Well, hello, friends. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. That's me. Well, oh, gentlemen. I, actually, Andrew, for some reason, your mic just got it just really sensitive again. Up. It was really wild. <laughs> it, oh, was, it, it just went sorry. to blasty. I muted it and it, I muted it and then it, it decided to. See, it did ah. it again. Watch. Hold on. I'm sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> it's okay. That stuff happens. I'm using this new software called Skype. And... <laughs> See, guys, unlike all those people who are just now trying to do a podcast exactly. from home, we've, we've figured it out. <laughs> we have 10 years of practice. I mean, we all just know that, 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 like, there is no answer. Everyone else will try to find one, and we know that there is none to be found. Full I'll tell you game. what, maybe, uh, maybe this is, this is like a Manhattan project where it's like the world's finest podcasting minds actually finally get together and come up with a solution. That's true. We have to do this on right. Zoom next. Is this too loud still? Uh, no, that's good. In fact, you could probably turn yourself up just a little bit more. Oh, do clear here. How about this? That sounds good. You want to take it from the top again? I'm sorry. All right. All right. I will. All right. All right. Uh, Hello and welcome to the oh. Weird Things Podcast. Did sorry. You I jumped again? I, uh, no, I, I thought I would catch you in. I, I spoke over it. Oh, no worries. Here, I'll, I'll catch you in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Brian Brushwood. Hey, it's me, Brian. Everything's fine, Brushwood. Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hey, friends, what's going on? And Bryce the Legend Castillo. Oh, I'm a, I'm a legend. Oh, very cool. Hi, everybody. So, gentlemen, what to talk about? <laughs> uh, number one, the name change of the podcast. Uh, we're no longer weird things. Now we're normal things. The, the new normal. Yeah. Welcome to the new normal things. You know, you can only role play plagues and disasters <laughs> so often that you know when it finally happens, you're like, "All right, four hours now. Brian's going to be in the stadium with his pants off. Uh, Justin's going to fight a T Rex, and Bryce is going to be Fred Sloth, Right? <laughs> I, yeah. I will. I will definitely never forget the first time I unironically had the thought. It's a good time to have a cult compound. Like, like I had, like, literally <laughs> in a self-assessment moment, I was like, "Well, I got that much going for me." <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, um, do we want to talk about this? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess uh, I, I, what I don't want to do is get caught up in the. I mean, look, everyone's checking the news. If you're into the video game of scaring yourself to death, this is the best news video game since since nine eleven. You get you got charts and graphs and and all these things and numbers that keep going up. You're if you love getting scared, you're gonna get so scared. It's gonna be great. Um, but uh, but I I'm fascinated by the practical side of things. Um, uh, like the the CDC is now at the point where they're begging people to never have a group more than twenty five people. And uh, uh, oh by the way, in related news, uh, the picnic has been postponed for Founders Day. Uh, we'll figure <laughs> out when the right date for that happens. But uh, but meanwhile. I, do you guys remember? I don't remember when I said it, but over the last year, I remember saying that it feels like the summer of the shark and that a 9-11 was coming. Like, I don't want to I, I bet in some fan remembers me saying that just from because uh, the, the biggest news story before uh, September 11th, 2001 was the summer of the shark. And I just had this vibe that increasingly weird tiny making a big deal out of small story news was happening and i felt like something was going to come in and suck out all the oxygen out of the room and uh, uh i'm saying i'm nostradamus that's what i'm saying okay. i was gonna say I, I, of, all, of all the takes i've heard on coronavirus called it is one that i have not heard yep. so uh, <laughs> and, like, this is why this is why people come to weird things <laughs> well you know uh 
uh, uh, side note, I know in a lot of our election discussions, Justin, I've had on the phone, the thing I always kept saying, like, man, it's a long way to November. You don't know what'll happen. <laughs> yeah. Like, sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. And and I don't know. I don't know how much we want to get into this, but uh, uh, I do think that there is. This is one of those crises where we're going to play the result no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, if if the result is lesser than one might think, then uh, there's going to be a lot of crowing about it. If it's worse, then people are going to take their frustrations out because right now we are kind of in free fall. Uh, uh, yeah. there, there are best practices that we can agree or disagree should or shouldn't be followed or should or shouldn't be enforced. Uh, but there's just no doubt about the fact that we've never really seen anything uh, at this scale with this particular problem in mm -hmm. decades, right? Uh, certainly not in my life uh, yeah. uh, that, that we can remember anything like this. And uh, right now, we are in a situation where a lot of people are just affected, like re regardless of where you think this is and, and whether or not you, you think this is hysteria or whatever. The fact of the matter is, all bars are closed now. All restaurants are are reduced to half capacity, and that means that anybody who worked at those places, they're out of a job. Uh, uh, you know, they're all the uh, uh, people at a lot of these venues that have happened even before people just stopped showing up because they wanted to enforce their own social distancing. You saw, uh, you know, just people not being there. Like, there's there's a ton of folks who are there's going to be a gigantic economic disruption. And we don't know where the economy is going to be on the other end of this. You know, there, there's a lot of reasons to say, hey, look, there, there are strong fundamentals. It will bounce back. But we don't know. We have no idea. This is all this is all kind of happening in, uh, in 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 real time. Yeah, it's a it's one of those things where it's like we not only don't know what the current status is. We can't know what the current status is in terms of, um, you know, just how lethal it is, how fast the vaccine will happen, how what the spread is like or whatever. But one thing we know for sure is the fear is real. And that's why we are seeing the most concrete of responses in the, in the markets, <laughs> everything tumbling uh, crazy down and, and so on. Um, it, uh, uh, I don't know. It's, 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 uh, I, I mean, it, it really does uh, for, for the younger folks, well, for anybody we, under we under 25. This this is this is an awful lot what, like what it felt like shortly after 9-11. And, and, and welcome. You, uh, I, I'm going to stop mocking you for not having had to go through a real uh, effed up time because uh, uh, we're going through a real effed up time and you're experiencing it just in slow motion. I think that there are beyond fear like there is people aren't buying stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, like that's usually what the economy runs on. It's how well the businesses are churning. And right now there's not a lot of churn unless you're you're a grocery store or uh, uh, another outlet that that uh, is is kind of well suited for this bizarre quarantine world that we're living in right now. But like uh, uh, in general, you know, even if you believe that there is uh, uh you know that, that things will bounce back there's just no denying the fact that right now ain't nobody doing nothing right no one's spending money on the things that they would otherwise spend money on there's as far as the bouncing backs right yeah and that's just a matter of how much time and then you know uh what the sort of human cost is but someone in the chat room mentioned worried about your 401k i mean if you planned on cashing out you know next couple weeks yeah problematic but if you're worried about it for a year or two no don't like look at if you look at the graph that shows you the market over time in every single disruption from world war ii to 9 11 you see these drops these these tiny the drops are tiny and the trend keeps going upwards and so uh yeah when there, recover, there an article the, the, that said I, I thought there was some blog post uh, uh years ago that that said here's what it would look like if you bought at the peak before the four greatest drops in the over the last hundred years and you still ended up a gazillionaire but like like e e trying to time the market was insignificant even if you bought at all the wrong times yeah. Yeah, what the markets hate is uncertainty, and we have a tremendous amount of uncertainty because we just don't know what's going to happen. And, and like with, with the restaurant closings, all that, that's why we're focused more like, right, there's a lot of effort to try to provide relief to people who are out of work because, you know, service employees, people like this who were county living paycheck to paycheck. Holy crap, what a nightmare, you know. In the long term, you know, these things we, you know, once the uncertainty and you can you can kind of figure out, well, 
where as we wave out nationwide testing and we start hearing about all these new cases, which are existing cases, but just ones we didn't know, right. you're going to get another probably wave of panic, you know, but then eventually a year from now, whatever, with a vaccine, et cetera, and everything else. And then we know, hey, this is another thing. The, the odd thing is, is that 12 months from now, we'll actually probably be in a better place, cross my fingers, from the point of view that the thing I've been trying to say is like, uh, COVID-19 is nasty. It's really nasty. But as the potential nastiness as viruses go from mortality rates, whatever, every time it's like a little bit of a lot, you, you roll the dice and it could be, you could have the same sort of virulence, you know, the same row factor, and it could be even more deadly. And that's the thing that we don't, there could be another thing two years or three years from now going through this now prepares us because this is the wake up call. And if you've been reading books like Hot Zone and all those scare books since the 90s, this was the thing they were talking about. You know, this is the kind of thing that we were looking at. And then, you know, we we talked about like Ron Bailey, who I, who's a friend and I love, but we know he had that article like, hey, maybe no more pandemics. And I'm like, you know, Ron's worth reading this coverage. But we talked about that like, no, this is it was a very optimistic case of our ability to stop this. But it didn't count account for, you know, a lot of factors coming to play. But. I guess my point is, is that in theory, if we react to this, we'll be better off for handling these things in the future. There was a, a, a pretty good meme that made me smile. Uh, uh, there's a video game called Plague uh, LLC or Plague Inc. That, uh, mm -hmm. that that I've been playing for 10 years. And uh, been one of your picks several times. Uh, uh, yes, that's right. That's right. Uh, as a matter of fact, recently banned in China because uh, people are playing mm -hmm. it to kind of learn how uh, viruses spread and so on. And, and, and of course, now it seems a little bit dark. Also, I hope I hope they're getting rich off of all this because it's a brilliant game and it was it was a, a clever idea and you actually learn but in the game it's notoriously difficult the last country is always greenland and then and then like the the reddit meme says headline greenland gets first covid face and then and then it's just a giant troll <laughs> face with bugged out scared eyes and it just says virus ink <laughs> players ah it's truly over yeah. or yeah play gink <laughs> sorry So, uh, yeah, fun times. Um, uh, Justin, tell us a little bit what you did last night. Uh, oh, I uh, well, we I was doing the the the, the debate live stream, and uh, you know, I've I've actually been uh, kind of uh, uh, you know reassessing as everybody is about what's happening and and where we are and where our business is and everything. And over the weekend, I had a buddy of mine call me uh, who runs a site eight years ago he was the uh a music and lifestyle uh reporter for their uh dallas alt weekly and uh he decided to uh you know kind of take the next step and he got some money together and put together his own website centraltrack.com which to this day covers dallas arts and stuff like that and he calls me over the weekend because all of his advertising just pulled out because he's over leveraged on live event advertising. And now he's got a really short runway to figure out how to keep this thing alive. And it kind of highlighted to me, wow, it turns out that against all odds in this bizarre, weird, uh, 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 nomad existence that I've carved out for myself on the internet, uh, I'm fairly stable. <laughs> at least for now, you know, until uh, everybody starts, if, if money really gets tight and people start taking a look at their Patreon stuff and cut back on it, then, then then I'll be singing a different tune. But for right now, things are doing pretty well. And and so I, I decided I really wanted to try and uh, give back to folks that aren't uh, doing well. So during the uh, during the, the, the stream yesterday, I uh, uh, set up a donation link for the Alameda County Community Food Bank. Uh, not only are they helping to get kids fed during uh, this period where school's out of session, uh, but also, uh, uh, you know, we have a large homeless population, obviously, out here in the East Bay. We got a lot of folks that are, again, paycheck to paycheck that might come uh, needing food pretty soon over the next few weeks. And so uh, over the couple hours that we were live, we were able to raise about uh, – 25 over 25 uh hundred dollars and that just goes right in their pockets that was me dancing around because we got over 2500 in the charm <laughs> uh but uh uh yeah so that was uh that was that was last night and it was it was awesome to uh 
awesome, awesome to have that, and I'll be I'll be happy to do it again. In fact, if anybody wants to donate, the the link is still live. Bit.ly slash Eat Politics. That's great. That was super kind of you to do that, man. You're a good. You're a good person. Um, well, you know, I don't know. I I, I think it's just uh uh. This is scary, man. Yeah. If anybody is in a position where I mean, like, thankfully the three of us make our living in in industries that don't aren't immediately affected in fact well, and, and i'll, in and I'll first might do better all three of us at various points where uh, our primary income was exclusively live events with large gatherings of people and we all have friends you know it, it, this uh, you know now that uh, for for all of the joy and the electricity that came from touring and being on the road and being at you know events with 300 people there yeah, I got I got friends who are calling me up saying like forty thousand dollars of cancellations all in one day, just woof, just like oh, that. Geez. And then suddenly it hit me that it's like, uh, uh, and and we can't pretend like we're visionaries or anything like that, but 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 we are we do happen to be um, uh, in a very privileged and lucky position in both. And I guess that's a two way street to anyone listening to the sound of our voice. We are glad. Uh, I think I speak for all of us, but we are glad that we exist uh, as as your virtual friends hanging out with you. Many people listening right now are in various stages of quarantine or whatever. Uh, but it's it's good that that we're able to provide value and that we're man, it's uh, like live meetups. How long until that becomes okay to do again? It's crazy. Well, you know, yeah. here's the thing to think about too: is that we're going to have to think a lot about. Like particularly, let's take the example if you're a live performer. We, we're, there, that will come back, but it won't be the same. You know, conferences and conventions going forward. It's this is this is we've had we had one black swan event in the the you know 2010s with or with you know 9/11, and now we have 2020 started with a black swan event of you know an epic proportion sort of thing that changes the way we think about it. life will go back but then things will not be back to the same you know we we have all these layers of security and whatever and arguably for to whatever benefit but in this and you know we're still at war in other countries for what happened back in you know 911 and now going forward every convention planner every person planning a thing is going to have like ah but if we have a covid thing what do we do how do we handle this and so i would say for people who are involved in live entertainment and stuff is you know think Think, you know, one, hope for the best things to go back to normal, but also think about like what we did, that transition we made and think about, are there other ways you can deliver your entertainment? Are there other ways, you know, what is going to be the new, the new normal? Wow. Holy cow. Bryce just posted in the chat, uh, something that I had, I was saving as my prediction for cord killers. Um, but, but I remember thinking, uh, day and date has to be the new normal for movies. Now there's no way. That 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 anyone is gonna gamble on on a blockbuster where everybody gets into a, a, a room to share coughs for a uh, for a show. Yeah. So. I mean that. And so NBC like, Universe. Uh, oh no, go ahead, just. Uh, uh, it, well, here, no, get 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 the news out, and then I'll I'll, I'll punctuate it. And so NBC Universal has said that uh, at least four of their upcoming movies, including Trolls World Tour, The Hunt, The Invisible Man, and Emma, will be released day and date on video on demand markets for a rest of, an, a, a suggested price of twenty dollars for a two day rental. So. The reason why this stuff never happened before was because the studios always had to negotiate with the theater chains. And the theater chains were like, oh, we're going to go out of business. No one will want to come. Well, now nobody's going there, right? <laughs> In fact, many are uh, 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 either state-wise or federally barred from operating. <laughs> so if that's the case, then now the studios are like, well, guess what? Uh, we got we to gotta make money somehow. We're not going to just sit on these... Uh, sit on these things so we're going to go forward and we'll see whether or not that the theater chains are ever going to be able to have the stroke to bring that back wow yeah it's uh one of the many things like yeah that's I, we're we're gonna see the next decade's gonna be in many ways how things and again not you know not that we're all gonna be bundled down inside of our homes a year from now or whatever hopefully not uh but it is gonna be we are going to think about a lot of things like you know vr you know we've talked a lot about this you guys all have vr headsets i've got a couple quests and stuff and i've talked to several people like oh yeah we've been buying them we're looking to buy them because they're the idea of being stuck in your home and you know there's a lot of opportunity out there too you know both on the health front to sort of innovate and do more things that we can do to make things healthier and then also on the front of entertainment and 
you know, change things up, which I guess we get into, maybe get into that after things. Um, let's take our minds off of this. Let's anybody else have any other comments and let's have something more, just a, a different thing to think about. Let's go to the world of astronomy. Okay. And, uh, I mean, you know, that's nice stars, planets, asteroids coming by earth doing near misses next month. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> I tell you what, man, it, it is funny how just the volumes turn down on all of these Armageddon scenarios. <laughs> like, yeah. like you just like even hearing that, I remember there was a time uh, weeks ago that that would electrify me. But now I'm just like, eh, it was for the best. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw my Instagram photo I put up. I'm doubtful. Um, I was walking by uh, the... I'm walking by a bus stop, but I looked over and I'm like, well, that's just odd. And this is what I saw. And I said, this is this is sort of like this was the, the times in which we're in now. And it, it's what, what what am I looking at? So it's a, <laughs> it's trash? a trash can with like a, a scary looking rat puppet with big, bushy hair on a bed of roses. <laughs> I'm like I'm like 2020 right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, remember when everyone said that they thought 2019 was the worst? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the giant asteroid the size of a mountain that will swing past Earth next month. Um, dubbed 1998-OR2, the space rocket will be so big that amateur sky gaze will be able to spot it as it streaks across the heavens. This is by Harry Petit from the Sun. Um, so not at all going to be sensationalized here. <laughs> but they show this nice graph showing you that, hey, here's Big Ben. Here's the Empire State Building. <laughs> Uh, it's also funny because they have this graph and it's totally not to scale. Like it's one of these things like it jumps like Big Ben is like almost the size of Empire State Building in this graph. Like, well, no, but uh, <laughs> they point out. But this thing is going to be about uh, four times the size of the Burj Khalifa. So uh, nice, big, huge rock, but it's only going to pass by like four million miles. So close uh, enough to, to get a gander. I I need I need it closer to get my jimmies uh, rustled, you know. Like we, we're we're living we're living in a an, an adrenaline soaked age, baby. I, you I know, know that one a little I'll, closer. I'll I'll panic when I see like rockets taking off from Elon Musk compound in Bel Air heading towards the asteroid. <laughs> like, I'll see you later, suckers. I'm hopping a ride. Yeah. Yeah, that. So, what is yeah, the point? The graph this, the graph this graph is, is the worst graph I've ever seen. Laughably out of scale. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll show you another one which somebody showed me, which was uh, uh, this was a a map of back to the subject of it was the spread of COVID. So it slowed down in Asia, which good. But on the, if you look at the the I, I can't know if you can see that, but the numbers on the right side of the graph start at uh, it's exponential. Oh, that's yeah, that funny. jumps to one thousand, and so you're looking at so, this so you're left with the impression like, oh, that there's like only so a bad. slight uptick. But meanwhile, that slight uptick is greater than the first, you know, half of the entire experience. Yeah, yeah. this is this is a horrible, horrible graph. <laughs> it's like it's like ah, I just like it's like no, it's that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so well, asteroid. Uh, I mean, what if, like, what if we've got the news too? Like, hey, and an asteroid's coming straight at you. My official statement would be to be a roll of the dice, whatever. Uh, uh, look, if, if we're all going to hell, then we're all going to hell. Come on, let's <laughs> just, just. Yeah. Like, what are you waiting for? Do it, do it, kill me. <laughs> I don't know. I'd, I'd probably take up religion. <laughs> I'd be like, well, somebody <laughs> must be right, and somebody's very angry. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, here, I'll tell you what, folks. Uh, uh, one way that you can make sure you're not angry in these trying times is to maybe peel off. Uh, uh, if you if you are in an industry where, where you are doing OK, then uh, keep us chattering. Patreon.com slash weird things. You heard the spiel a million times and uh, we're going to keep it short here. But Patreon.com slash weird things. Thank you. So I want to read an article about this and this made me think, huh? I haven't read a lot about this in sci-fi, and that's the North Star, Polaris. One of the things that's interesting, which I didn't understand uh, before, was that we don't have a precise idea of exactly how far away Polaris is because it fluctuates, and so the models are used to try to tell the distance of a star. And this is the North Star. This is a star. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you look up, boom, it's right there at the North. That's why we called it the North Star, because it would have been weird if the North Star wasn't right there. 
And so, one, we don't exactly know how far away. It's got a bit of a range. There's actually in like a cluster of stars. So I don't think it's actually a true trinary, but it looks like that. So, but so, sorry, I, I, I feel like you're, you're, you're leapfrogging over my ability to comprehend. Why, why can't There's we know? There's a star called the North no, Star. Uh, 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 if you're all in right, the northern right, hemisphere, right, you look dial, north. Dial back to SAS. Um, uh, but, 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 but why? how do we traditionally figure out how far a star is? How do we know how far any uh, star uh, is? Uh, one of the things is you look at as light travels through space, you get you get one as light as stars move, you get redshift as light travels through space, you're able to tell the difference by the wavelengths. As the wavelengths get stretched out, they reach you. So you look at the basically a spectrograph to try to determine what kind of star it is, how much energy it's outputting versus what's happening to the wavelengths as it's reached you. So that's one of the ways in which we we look at that. And for instance, when the reason we know the universe is expanding, we notice all the further stars out there all appeared to be like, you know, much older, but we realized that also that it was the wavelengths have been shifted as they get stretched out, like the, you know, the Doppler effect, right? Right. Well, you and know, I guess that tells uh, I, 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 I'm able to wrap my mind around the fact that, that something moving away from us is going to be red shifted, something moving towards us is blue shifted, and there are many more stars that are red shifting than blue shifting. But, but I understand that mainly as a measure of velocity in which direction they're going. Um, I guess I guess I'm just ignorant of, of how to or I guess I guess if you know the composition of the star, yes. then you can get an estimate of how far it is based on the velocity. If you assume farther out stars are moving faster, um, I, I, it, it, it's to, to translate that into a distance is the part that I, I, I don't really grok. Uh, well, at, it, at it kind of comes down to basically beyond beyond let's say like 400 light years we just use luminosity that's our sort of guess closer to it we can look at things like we can you know try to look at the spectrum of it and try to figure that out um you are, know in apparent there, size are there any stars that we look that we use parallax like like uh, uh you know take a measurement in on january 1st and another at june 1st when we're on the other side of the sun and and see if anything shifts according to each other um I I don't know I I, I don't know uh, I do not know yeah I, I, I do I not don't know either. how much I yeah I bet, I bet someone um, could write I, us I, I would imagine it would be so I would imagine it would be so minute compared like because they're trying to measure parallax that distance but but yeah essentially it's from like it's kind of looking at brightness and that's why it's hard that's why we don't have this is one of our our most beloved stars useful stars we and we have like a twenty percent error bar there because it is an imprecise way to do that. A twenty percent error bar for something that's not terribly far away. So, but I have a conspiracy theory for you. Oh, okay. oh, oh well, 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 just so I'm still wrapping my my, my mind, it, 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 there's no one particular reason that Polaris is especially hard to figure out how far away it is. Uh, I, I, you know, that I don't know if if we have. Uh, I think that part of it is the nature of where it is located near other stars. But as far as, I think there's a. a it's because of the fluctuation, basically, because Polaris has this sort of fluctuation. So it's basically as it goes back and forth, it's you know shifting its spectrum, which makes it difficult. Got it. Got it. OK. OK. So. All right. Now I'm all caught up. So the, the, so the conspiracy yeah. theory is what? It's my my conspiracy theory. My conspiracy theory. OK. Isn't it convenient we have a North Star? Isn't it a little bit odd? You look straight up to the North, and there's a star. Mm. Okay. Yeah, in an alternate timeline, there's somebody, there's another Andrew Main saying, seems awfully peculiar that there's two stars that just happen to be next to each other at the North Pole. <laughs> another alternate timeline. Isn't it weird that there's four stars right at the North Pole? <laughs> <laughs> Well, any star there is kind of, I mean, because it shifts over time, right? right. So, you know, the, the you know, 10,000, 20,000 years ago, it was, it's going to, it was shifting. Oh, that's true. And it'll shift again. But at the peak of our civilization, and by peak of our civilization, I mean the time that I'm alive and I get to say it's the peak mm -hmm. versus here we, we go look to the north, there it is. Is that a call? Is that is that a sign is that we need to go there? We need to go there and find whatever, maybe orbiting it? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. No. It's not a call. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I, I. I was. I'm busy. I. I was actually wondering. Um. Uh. What it would be like to. Uh. uh like. Uh, have a, a gap. Ah. That's the North Gap between two stars. I'm thinking of all the yeah. different things besides there happening to be one star that's that's uh, over the the top of the Earth. Uh But man, you want to talk about a human centric theory? <laughs> 
<laughs> the idea that <laughs> that the universe is created and humankind is placed on planet and that that Polaris is special because it happens to line up not not with the North Pole of Earth or what would be thought to be the North Pole because for all we know map makers could have started in the south and everything would be flipped upside down. Uh, that uh, that's 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 uh, I, look I'm in. Well no, I mean, for the point of view of, like, forget, like, if you're, like, some super powerful alien civilization and you can move stars and control gravity and stuff, and you're like, we're going to send these guys, these send these monkeys a signal. We, we, we've we calculated the peak time at which they'd be able to understand this and figure this thing out. And so we're going to move the stars into this position so there'll be one star. that will be the North Star. They'll use it for guidance. And ultimately, they'll understand that means come to the North Star and get your free coupon. Are, are you aware, minor spoiler, that you're describing a plot point from the TV show? Picard, uh, or, or do you, uh, no, you, I have not been watching Picard. <laughs> literal, literal plot point. Uh, very, very minor. I'm not spoiling anything, but right. there is a discussion about whether or not and why, or whether or not a naturally occurring eight star octonary uh system could ever occur. And they're like, no, so you'd have to make one. Why would you make one to attract people so you could come say you know, sell them your message or whatever it is. So so you're on to something, apparently. Apparently well, yeah, I mean that's been I mean that I mean that's that's you know going back to the Sentinel, Arthur C. Clarke and all the idea of like doing something, you know, some something that we recognize in space that's not supposed to be there that is the beck and the beacon to tell us to go like hey come here and so i was just thinking like man like maybe the north star's just been too obvious maybe it's just been too obvious yeah. for us to, and i'm sure somebody in science fiction has probably written that maybe it's just too obvious but i'm like man i think that'd be kind of a kind of cool premise because if you're gonna go like where should we go where would we go find aliens if they were to if they were the capable of doing planetary level engineering or stellar level movement, where would we go? You know, and we're standing there in the North Star. I guess, and, I, oh man, I, I think you're selling me on the conspiracy theory because the only way to make it even more obvious is to, I don't know, flicker the lights a little bit, aka have it fluctuate. Yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yes. <laughs> here. We're here. <laughs> You're having a little rave on the North Star. Yep. Uh, and that would be interesting too because, like, you could. One of the things about trying to talk to aliens is that we look for signals trying to figure out that like within our own time frame of human lives. And we get every now and then you get these blips and other sorts of things, which, you know, we wait to see how often they repeat, whatever. But what if you're a mature civilization and you only want to talk to more long lived mature civilizations? Maybe you send your signal out over a period of a thousand years, like like one bit per century. I mean, if you slow everything down enough, then the speed of light doesn't seem like much of an inconvenience at all. You're just hanging out, talking to the other stars over. I mean, you don't have a long time in the chat room called the universe before suddenly everything heat deaths on you. But you can have a long, slow, leisurely conversation yeah. with what yeah. feels like no lag whatsoever if you're thinking at the thought of uh, 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 millennia and eons. Yeah. You know, the, the real, the, the slow talking. That's one of the things that, like, in communicating to submarines, you know, EMF, all of that is, you know, water sort of absorbs hard, most of that. So it's hard to, you know, signal them. So they have to use, like, these very, these special forms of, like, super, super long wave frequencies, which means your bit rates are super slow. Um, which also, like, you know, if you're just a slow moving animal, you don't care. I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll get around to the message. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So, um, just something to think about, keeping our eyes to the skies. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there was a, uh, man, um, <laughs> this is, a, um, this is, uh, apparently, uh, one of the Easter Island statues got accidentally destroyed by a truck when somebody's brakes failed. Oh no. I mean, yep. Wow. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to just process. Like, uh, was it? Was it? A, was it one of the good ones, or was it a crappy one? <laughs> yeah. Oh my uh, God. Yep. There it is. There's video. A uh, home video of just a straight up uh, Toyota Tacoma, a straddling, looking like it's trying to mount <laughs> the to the Easter Island head. I, 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 no, yeah. I just I need I need a picture of what it looked like before because right now the rubble is so granular it almost looks like it looks like a video game where it just like breaks into like all these like you know pre-portioned uh, smaller parcels. Sorry, right, actually now that I look, that looks like a Chevy Silverado. That that may be the same kind of car we just got, Bonnie. Huh. Mm -hmm. 
Try well, not to run any of them. What now? Any any uh, uh, Easter Island statues in Austin better watch your back. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Maybe we'll just put one up just so that she can run into it. <laughs> yeah. I've been uh, listening to the the Peter Diamandis book. Uh, was it the future is faster than you think? Mm-hmm. And they mentioned something there which I did not know. You, you're familiar with there's a drug called rapamycin, which if you get an injection or stents or anything like, or if you get like let's say a transplant or stents, they give you rapamycin, which helps prevent your body from rejecting it. I, I'm not familiar. So, I, I, I knew that there are some anti-rejection drugs, but I didn't know that one by name. So uh, rapamycin's one of them, and where it came from is fascinating. Back yeah, decades ago, when Easter Island was planning to put in airports, there was this uh, put in an airport. There was this panic because this was a pretty pristine ecosystem. So tons of scientists went there and started collecting soil samples, biological samples, all sorts of the data they could. One of the soil samples they got, which apparently came from right near one of the big stone heads, they found this microbe which produced the chemical which makes up rapamycin, and it was there that they discovered this life-saving, life-extending drug. Wow. Just hanging out in the dirt. By a big, giant head. I mean, I'll tell you what, maybe that dude's doing uh, everybody a favor doing donuts by the uh, big Easter (laughs) Island statue and knocking stuff over. Yeah. Uh so that yeah, of course, Tally's are all, uh, I use rapamycin in my experiments. It's cheap as hell and potent. So, you know. Um, yeah, we can all relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you, Easter Island. Island. Yeah. Yeah. If I put it on a Pop Tart, will it make it taste better? <laughs> do, we, do we do we know what that thing looked like before it got hit? Do we have uh do we have any any idea of, of, of like how much damage it so it, that was like what one of the for real for real ones, huh? Like that that is the there's no like minor subsection we're, of we're, we're not quite statue. sure they they have uh, over a thousand of these statues and uh so, yeah. this is just what's on cnn there's one thing we know for sure is that one was looking the wrong way <laughs> you never saw it coming <laughs> ever saw it coming oh geez there's another point of view where you see it like you see it over it you go back you see if this go do a search for easter easter island statue hit bryce and scroll down yeah and you see the, the there you go trapped under the wheels yeah yeah no it's definitely uh, it's yeah. uh, like are you saying yeah, they it, left it there it's i mean well <laughs> it's <laughs> move on hey don't worry your shift is over i'll watch for the new gods <laughs> <laughs> trucktober every month <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put my truck nuts on the back of this on this skull. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm just waiting for the 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 the, the Dennis Leary narration of everything. <laughs> you know, like, you want a truck that can knock over an Easter Island statue? <laughs> yeah, I I'm looking at these photos. It is such an eerie, amazing sort of place when you just look at that and you think about like you know the first visitors there are like so uh. What's the deal with all the statues? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a thing. Um, and you've seen where they've dug up and they found, like, the, the bodies go, like, two-thirds of the way into the ground for many of them. Oh, wow. It's not, yeah, if you look at, like, you see the excavation, you'll see, that, like, they go, like, they're way, way deep in there. Like, they let a lot of effort into that. So, oh, boy. It does so, just look like a... Like some sort of uh, a Universal Studios prop version of what that like what what happened there. Like, it's, it's and, just and, like, and like a distracted uh, a distracted producer trying to create his eighth scare zone, and he's like, I don't know, like put a truck on one of those Easter Island heads, like maybe somebody <laughs> ran over it, and and also okay. put put the word like. Uh, biohazard COVID-19 or whatever, and Trump is president. It's just going to be, be crazy, scary world. And, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, one of your picks? Yeah. yeah. Hey, I got a pick. Uh, so the one thing about this quarantine is that I've been watching a lot more stuff. So uh, uh, I, I talked about Fleabag last week. I liked Fleabag, finished it. Uh, good, good, good work by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Um, and then we watched something that, uh, I was long overdue to watch, uh, shamefully had not watched it up until Saturday, but we watched, uh, Snowpiercer. Mm. Um, and, uh, I, I liked it very, it was good. It was good. It was, it was, uh, uh, you know, I can see why they're making it a television show because there were moments in that movie where, 
I they they literally the last act of the movie they're like running through these elements of this train culture that I think is uh, probably more I wanted to luxuriate more on I think that like the most interesting parts of that world are exploring how society works in that world as opposed to the kind of fairly straight ahead action adventure revolution that is that is happening and uh, I'm I'm curious to see what they do with the upcoming television adaptation. Uh, did you? Yeah, it's uh, a fun, weird movie. Uh, yeah, I I liked it okay when I watched it, but then I liked it a lot more when I started watching all those think pieces, to, uh, deconstructing, you know, uh, that it's a you know class society and that the whole thing is uh, spoiler alert, you know, it's a trap, but it's a closed loop, and all the characters like are looking uh, up and down the barrel of the camera, except for only two characters. Uh, who seem to be the only characters that recognize that there's an outside world and are paying attention to it, uh, which becomes significant in the plot. Um, I liked I liked it more once I understood how subtle and and well directed it was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and also I don't know if there's like a director's version or whatever, but famously that that is probably the last, uh, considering what has happened, a movie that Harvey Weinstein very famously fought with the director about and sought to change a, a bunch of stuff, which was. A hallmark of that man's movie career, which uh, now uh, he will uh, conduct from a prison cell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you like that conceit and you want a preview of what I imagine a Snowpiercer movie will look like, uh, I'll, I'll double down. I mentioned it a few times before, but uh, Infinity Train is a lot of fun. And ju uh, Justin, the episodes are only, I think, 11 minutes long on Cartoon Network. Um, and uh, it's, it's from some of the folks that did um, regular show. Uh, it's about a girl. It, it, similar to your thing, uh, it's uh, e each episode begins with them closing out an adventure in one car and and then beginning the procedural adventure in the next car, and, uh, and then yeah. they you know uh, get out and move on. And of course, characters mature and and plot devices uh, come out along the way. But but uh, I, it, I I think you I, it might be worth a half hour to watch three episodes and see if you like yep. it. Uh, but uh, I guess I guess I'll do I'll do two retreads. I'll, I've mentioned Infinity Train before, but I'll also re-mention. I finally got my kids. I dangled. I didn't think they were gonna take to it the way they did, but they are all in on the insanity of the first three episodes of Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. Uh, it's it's just the right amount of WTF for them. And uh, they're they're really really digging it, and I'm digging a uh, second lap through it. Especially knowing that uh, the first season makes some big bold promises of weird in the beginning, and does end up sticking the landing somehow. Where it's like, wow, you did it! You 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 delivered on every one of those crazy ass promises you made with the five different uh, various entities and multiple protagonists uh, all coming together. So uh, certainly the first season, 100%. The second second one is sillier. I liked it a lot, uh, but but the first one I thought was was quite a feat. Uh, I got a little bit right. of a pick. I also did a bit of watching stuff. I managed to watch like a lot of stuff over the past week, uh, but I think the the thing that maybe is not on uh, on people's radars too much is a 2019 uh, Amazon Prime show called The Feed. Anybody hear about The Feed? No. Um, it's kind of it's kind of a black mirror sort of premise. So, uh, it's a futuristic world where uh, uh, everyone is connected to the feed, and it's this uh, huge connected social network that is uh, implanted into people. And uh, one day, uh, the things start to go wrong, and the feed starts messing with people's heads. It, it ends up being the first episode is is all I got to watch last night. But uh, the first episode, it's it's a kind of a black mirror premise, but then it sort of just it's a thriller it's a sci-fi thriller and i think it's a little more gonna be a little more actiony than sort of heady sort of stuff uh but it was it, but it's it's really well done and i think for a sci-fi show with you know a lot of big graphics and 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 uh you know a large premise like this i think it i think it manages to to be kind of an interesting uh an interesting concept so the feed you know in these sort of uh technological dystopian sort of stories you kind of have to now sort of imagine the conceit is in a world where we never watched Black Mirror, you had <laughs> yeah, right? a term to use yeah. to describe this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, 
my pick is, and I haven't finished it yet. I, I'm about an episode and a half from finishing it, but I've been enjoying it. After I watched, I enjoyed, you know, uh, Narcos season two, Mexico. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't have enough of watching scrappy entrepreneurs trying to deliver, you know, drugs to Americans and decided that uh, let me watch this Amazon Prime uh, show, which is a co-production deal. Uh, zero, zero, zero. You guys seen this? No, I know nothing about this. So zero, zero, zero. I think it's primarily an Italian production, but it takes place, you know, deals with the, sto the story of a, tr of a shipment of cocaine. Um, so it involves this, you know, the Italian mafia, which is, you know, buying it, these brokers from, uh, this family with who are initial characters, Gabriel Byrne and his, his, his two kids who are the ones who are trying to ship it. And then these Mexican cartels, which are the ones that were, you know, transporting it through Mexico, et cetera. And so you get the story of the three different groups who are involved in this In the Mexico, the story is about this. These former uh, Mexican police special forces who turn into basically become a uh, super violent drug cartel, like you know, like horrifically violent, but because they've been trained with like special forces tactics and stuff, they're extremely ruthlessly efficient, and basically take over um, uh, I think, um, uh, parts of you know major you know uh, Mexican cities and stuff, you know, and it's sort of disturbing and but also kind of very realistic too. And then, you know, the Italian mafia side of it's really interesting, kind of neat, you know, because, the, the, you know, it starts from that sort of point of view. And then the family, which are the brokers, which they run the shipping company, and they're the ones trying to transport this shipment. But, you know, there's plots afoot, and it's beautifully shot, very, very interesting. I, I found it uh, very, uh, very engaging so far. But it is one of those things where you're like, wow, I'm really compelled by this plot. Oh wait, those are horrible people. Like, oh wow, this is great how this 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 scrappy young guy in Mexico is able to put together the gang. Like, oh my God, they're murdering innocent people, <laughs> you know. But you're you're still pulled into it. So, um, that is zero zero zero. Yeah, that looks cool. I did see that when I was scrolling through Amazon the other day, uh, and I I I saw it, and I knew I knew that there was a show that was fall that was about following a shipment of drugs, and I didn't know the name. So I'm glad that I know that the name is zero zero yeah. zero really beautifully shot and and the locations are amazing they shot like parts of it are in senegal you know like like you don't see a lot of movies you know over here you know that you know have parts of it shot there in senegal so you know from italy to mexico senegal the middle east whatever a really a very very if anything watch it from just watching this it's a great example of like a production that spreads across continents and uses diverse you know sometimes you're watching people speak english sometimes it's italian sometimes it's spanish you know, and it's a very, you know, but it just all sort of melds together wonderfully well. So Ooh. there you go. It's been really, really weird. <laughs> hey, there we go. All right. Uh, it's like a negative times the negative equals a positive, where it's just like, all right, welcome to the Weird Things podcast. Like, I went to the store. Everything was available <laughs> in big supplies. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, we can take a couple I, uh, minutes. Here. Uh, so get ready my for joke it. was in case of a disaster, I was going to use Amazon, and then Amazon Fresh, like you can't get an order delivered, and I'm like, man, oh, what does really? this world come to? Yeah, the the HEB curbside pickup, their time slots are booked for like a week or something. Like, oh, that's crazy. it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right, we will get started with after things here in just a few moments. You guys catch the uh, you catch that Westworld? I didn't. No, I was watching the debate. Was it good? I think it was pretty good. Yeah, I, I it don't it feels like a like a like a clean slate almost. Um, not How much mystery boxes? Because my excitement to watch it is directly inverse to the amount of mystery boxes that are that are introduced. Um. I'd say there's one or two, between one and three mystery boxes, I guess. I don't know. It's 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 hard because they because all of down the... them. that's down for them. Normally, they were <laughs> usually working with like, you know, there's a riddle and then somebody's uh, mysteriously fingering their car keys and somebody mm -hmm. else is, uh, uh, you know, calls, you know, gets called a different name uh, at another point. So it's usually like one mm -hmm. mystery box per scene. 
Uh, so if they're down to three in general, then maybe they're they're dealing with uh, something a little bit more coherent. Yeah, it's it's it, it's really it it is refreshing for that show to kind of take a step back and just uh, kind of reset all of the, the characters' sort of um, motivations and 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 actions. Um, uh, but uh, by the way, a uh, 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 strategy guide tip: uh, if you're watching it, uh, there's an after credits sequence. So, uh oh, you know, uh oh, everybody. I it was, uh, it's not, it's not a very big thing, and I, but I won't, I won't spoil it just in case people want it. But when it, when I saw it and I saw the thing that they were doing, it definitely made me cackle out loud at what <laughs> what that new thing might be. Uh, Aaron Paul uh, is very good in it, uh, I think. Also. Yeah, he's he's somebody that I feel like he deserves another thing. Like I, mm-hmm. I kind of wanted, kind of want to see him in, uh, you know, something that isn't just totally typecast as, you know, homie from Breaking Bad. Like, yeah, I think he just he got kind of like angry young man typecast. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Either he was a good guy, angry young man, or a bad guy, angry young man. But they're all just effective derivatives of Pinkman. Yeah. Uh, whereas, like, I would think, like, he would be somebody that, you know, you could do that could even do, like, just straight comedy. Like, uh, oh, I bet. I mean, sir. Yeah. yeah you, you guys were, talking about Westworld? Like, Aaron Paul? Yeah. Aaron Westworld. Paul in general, but, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, considering how well he bounces him, granted it's animated, but he bounces off uh, Homie and BoJack Horseman. Like, yeah. you know, I don't think that there's yeah, you kind of dumb him down a little bit, so you're kind of laughing at him and with him. But uh, that was part of the Pinkman charm, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, I, I I'm glad to see him doing this. I I just hope that it's it's not another like, just like oh the here the big stretch is I'm an angry robot and not an angry man. <laughs> he was also good in the path. I really like I like the path. I said I say, but I haven't seen season two. But um, say I s- he was good in that. Uh, Justin, did you need to go get a drink? Nah, screw it. What he says. Reggie33 says, how was El Camino? I have yet to watch it. Uh, I would say don't hype it up too much. It's, I mean, <laughs> it's fine, but don't hype it up very much. Uh, if, if, uh, it's, it's, uh, <clears throat> if you could bottle up the aftertaste of Breaking Bad and, and sell just the aftertaste, then... That's the it that's is, El Camino. It is an epilogue to Breaking Bad in the most direct terms. Um, so, all right, if you if you had the opportunity, if somebody was bri- like uh, binging Breaking Bad right now for the first time, yeah. would they be happy with El Camino? So the final episode airs. Would they be happy if the next thing that they press played on like immediately was El Camino? I think that would be the ideal order because it. I mean, it is right at the end of Breaking Bad that it takes place in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I think what Justin's asking is like, if you're the type of person that gets to the end of Breaking Bad and your first thought is, ooh, you know what I need is two more hours of no new revelations, except maybe one minor one. It's closure. Just little tiny bits and pieces. <laughs> but beyond, beyond that, it's just more like, at the end of any show that we loved, right? Like, even if it was good or a bad ending, if if you know you had that moment where there's wait there's no new episodes you're like boo if there was a controversial movie of of varying quality i feel like i would immediately be like yes my larger question was do you think it's hurt by the fact that it's you know so much later and so now breaking bad isn't just the show that we liked it isn't the, 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 the show that you either stuck with or binged at some point it's now Oh my God! The band's getting back together. It's a fucking Beatles reunion now of like all these people that we hadn't seen together. Uh, that that those expectations hurt it in a way where if you were just like, okay, that was the end of the show. Here's a two-hour epilogue. You'd be like, cool. Epilogue yeah, basically. The- Oftentimes, really, don't they're, they're just kind of landing gear for the characters. Yeah, basically. I mean, that's. That's pretty much what it is, because I mean, like, it's not. It's got a couple of spectacle moments, but it's not the huge, the, the huge thing that it sounds like on paper. Um, yeah. So that's yeah that that would be the ideal way to see it. I think is that right at the end. Of that was the, the other the other problem is them saying like, oh, it's a Breaking Bad movie. 
And it's like the immediate thing that you think of for a Breaking Bad movie is like, all right, let's take all the tension that they would build up over their best episodes, and we're going to have this high wire, you're going to have a heart attack in the theater level tension <laughs> that's going to bring back all of our characters. And it sounds like it, it really just wasn't that. It's just not a lot of that. It's there's it, just it's just peppered on a little bit. So you get bits and pieces, and you it's and it's a lot of closure. Like a lot of it is just closure. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you guys want to do weird or do after things? Yeah. Let's do it. I need caffeine. I need more caffeine. I'm gonna start injecting caffeine. <laughs> well, so maybe. Are you gonna buy IV drip of caffeine? Is that a thing? Is it? I'm sure you could, right? Yeah. Well, that, I wonder if that would All be right. too too strong. Oh, well, you're going to be the boss of my body now, Bryce. Oh, no, I I just, see. Yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. The AP from 1996, drip coffee, IV caffeine, may prevent post-surgery headaches. There you go. Okay. 1996. <laughs> wow, what a lead. A coffee lover's fantasy. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <made> <laughs> IV drip has arrived. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. All I right. bet you the person that got that that person that got that that job used to pay like a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> there were so many of them. <laughs> oh shoot! Okay. Well, that person wrote that. They're like, nailed it. Great at my job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's start after things. I'll count you in here in three, two. Hello and welcome to Survival Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Heck yeah. Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hey, friends, what's going on? And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey, everybody, that's me. So, gentlemen, I think that for every crisis, there is a person and it is their hour. I mm. think with millions of people staying home, it's our time people who are actually naturally hermits and stay home all the time to offer our guidance and did experience. You, did you see briefly uh, hashtag Gen X was trending? And, and I was like, okay, what's going on here? And it was nothing but Gen X bragging about, yes, millennials and boomers fight to the death. We have learned to entertain ourselves with or without electri uh, electric devices. We were the latchkey generation. Yeah. We stand and laugh. Oh, you're not losing electricity. Electricity is not going to go away. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't understand the point either. But man, yeah, just just Gen X suddenly was flexing. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Enjoy it, flannel tards. <laughs> uh, all seriousness, though. Um, I mean, we all. Uh, the three of us, uh, you know, Bryce has to actually go to an office, but for the most of us, you know, we're actually, Brian, you've got a compound now, so you, 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 you don't, you, but you've had a lot of experience though, the working from home and the idea of like, you know, like I've, I've, I've gone days with out leaving my house, not intentionally <laughs> and not because of the court order, uh, but because I just get caught up in a project. And I'm like, I have food in the fridge or order something. And I'm like, man, when is the last time I saw my mailbox? So how does one occupy themselves? Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, number one, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is the year of can it be virtualized? Going outside, can it be virtualized? Uh, friendships, can they be virtualized? Concerts, can they be virtualized? Uh, uh, food experiences, can they be virtualized? Like, uh, uh, this, uh, that's if, if you are somebody who is uh, with an entrepreneurial bent, figure out a thing that people do that they don't think they're going to miss right now, but probably will find themselves missing in six months and figure out a way to deliver a virtual version of that. Cool. Yeah. But I mean, I think that, you know, in terms of staying, you know, I, I've been working from home for six years now. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest thing that I found, unfortunately, is that like, you know, I, I personally, my personality demands that I get the hell out of the house at a certain point. And now there's less of that, or at least less of destinations. I can still leave my house, but I just kind of got to walk around my block and then come home. <laughs> Uh, 
beyond that, there's really just, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest thing is self-scheduling was a big lesson that I had to learn uh, early on, just figuring out like exactly what I needed to do, the, the time I was giving myself to do it and, and, and getting better at hitting those goals. Uh, whiteboard was helpful more recently in terms of doing breaking down larger projects. But uh, the, the, the biggest part of working from home for me was just self-discipline of like that this is not vacation this is work if you care about getting stuff done then congratulations you've given yourself the maximum amount of bandwidth to do it uh but it means keeping yourself on schedule yeah like yeah. creating a a structure for you to get stuff done in terms of planning out your day in probably ways you wouldn't have planned out before in terms of like okay, this, this hour I'm going to be at the computer, this hour I'm going to be making phone calls, like stuff you would not micromanage to that degree, like set it up and don't just write it down, like turn the alerts on on your phone or have a, if you have like, if you do the Pomodoro thing, get like a physical thing so you can see the timer so that you know, cause when you can see it, when you can see the obligation there, uh, or you're constantly aware of it, it, that that helps you keep on track. Because that the other problem with working from home, like you said, Justin, like you have the most bandwidth, you also have the most opportunities to like be distracted with other stimulus. Well, and uh, I, I'll tell you what, um, it's, it's funny, like I quit my office job uh, 20 years ago so that I could eventually build an office and go to an office and get some work done because uh, working from home was great up until kids started being around all the time and kids who get bored figure out that they can manufacture reasons to grab your attention. And, uh, it was it, with, with three kids and, a, you know, currently one being seven years old, uh, th what was the most productive space in the house? This, this office with glass doors suddenly became just a, a nuked zone. There was no possible way to get a single damn thing done. And so now I have to, I have to run away and, and come out over here. I I find that one of the ways that time just passes super fast for me is I have talked about this a lot, but like, man, you know, I, like I look at like Udemy and taking those courses, you know, you take a 40 hour Udemy course, it's 40 hours that you get to spend learning something. And I've mentioned this before, your public libraries, like many of them offer lynda.com, the L-Y-N-D-A courses for free. A lot of them have just a lot of great online stuff. If you're, we're going to be spending the next several weeks or more, you know, looking for things to do after you get burned out on Netflix, I highly recommend like you can come out on the other side of this with a skill, that skill that ah, I've been meaning to do this, but instead of, you know, because many of us, one, aren't able to, able to go to work or two, just not able to go out and socialize. What, what better way to make use of the time than all of a sudden have some capability you didn't have before. Well, and, you know? and that's what I'm and, hoping and, is know. that this will be sort of a renaissance of like, uh, uh, I mean, hey, look, um, uh, Yes, to being worried for all the people who actually are getting sick, but but the vast, 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 vast majority of people who are self quarantining uh, and and spending more time at home. Guess what? You have all said for decades that you will get around to it. Congratulations, you've been handed a round to it. You have been handed time. If I only had more time, now suddenly you have time, and now is the decision where you either want to fill that time with playing the fear game, hitting refresh constantly, watching numbers go up, and talking to yourself about scary stuff, uh, filling your head with, with dumb self-chatter, or uh, you could get to work, and guess what happens? When you get to work learning a new trade, a new skill, or whatever, you get things done, the time goes faster, and you come out farther ahead. Now is the time, more than at any other, to pivot. If you've been thinking about getting around to, and now all of a sudden, you know, but, but it's like, ah, oh, but I have another shift in my service industry job or whatever. This is it. This is the universe handing you your biggest wake-up call that you're ever going to get. And it's never been easier to get your hands on information to learn a new trade or to uh, develop a new skill or, or prepare yourself for, you know, what the next 10 years is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I say, Isaac Newton did his best work during the plague. Yeah. yeah. Just... Just saying, just saying. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, like, uh, uh, the, uh, another strong thing is like find find time to to have to either get out of the house and take a walk, and uh, maybe not go to the gym, but maybe take a walk or mm -hmm. get you know get get active. You know, when when I am at home and I don't want to go to the gym, 
Uh, I've got the Ring Fit Adventure, the 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 yoga uh, uh, the yoga ring game that mm-hmm. I was talking about a while ago. That uh, Nintendo has said we are so completely sold out, and we're trying to make many many more because everyone wants to work out at home. Um, but even stuff like like Just Dance, you know, the the little dancing game, like that that'll burn you some calories uh, right quick. Yeah, you know, uh, and and that kind of gets the blood pumping. It kind of gets, you know, kind of gets you started. You know, if you Owen, yeah. So get him. Oh, and shake it up. Yeah. Find oh, even um, Nike. Nike has a uh, Nike train club app where it's a bunch of exercises and they have a lot of stuff you can do without needing equipment or free weights. So like you, there are a lot of free poss- uh, opportunities also to just like wake yourself up, wake your body up. Yeah. So I guess mm-hmm. it's really a two way street. Uh, this, one one message is this is your opportunity to learn and do stuff. But also this is your uh, opportunity to uh, to take what you know and teach it. Figure out if anyone is is teaching it online, and then if nobody's the expert, then congrats, you could be the expert in whatever that thing is. So, one of the things we talked about before and weird things was the for people who are being impacted, particularly anybody in the service industry, um, from an entertainment point of view, people live entertainers, etc. Brian, you just mentioned the idea of like teaching. And I think that's what I was thinking, thinking forward is, you know, what, what can we do as far as, uh, forward thinking, you know, if I was, if I was a cruise ship entertainer right now, I would be concerned because I, I don't, this is, and I, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think the cruise industry is ever going to fully recover from this. I Um, agree. I agree. I, I, I don't see how certainly, uh, Certainly, people will want to get on a boat and go places, but but the mm-hmm. the mega cruise ships, the let's keep on making it even bigger with more amenities or whatever. I just don't see that surviving at all. I think there'll be some of it, but I don't know if it'll be the size because I think that everybody, people are going to be mindful of of being in those environments, and I so I think there is going to be you know it's going to be impacted, and so for people who are in that form of entertainment, live entertainment, like. You know, what would I be telling a 20 year old version of myself that was, you know, in that business? And I would say that, you know, the corporate world, you know, conferences and stuff are also going to be downsized, but they're still going to be offices. People are going to still be you in think about like in environments where people can control it or feel they've controlling it, like somebody's home, a, a workplace or places like that. And I think that's the thing to think about, like, OK. Is there going to be, you know, markets for like, you know, magicians going and doing shows for, you know, a corporate event held at a corporate, you know, end of office or stuff like this, bringing in an entertainer into the office, bringing somebody into an environment there. I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here, thinking about like, where are people going to feel more comfortable doing that? And I don't quite know the answer, but that might be one of those. I mean, I'll tell you what, uh, (laughs) uh, 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 Bummer of a time for HQ to melt down and cease to be a national phenomenon because uh, it seems like right now people would be losing their mind twice a day having cash and prizes dangled in front of them. Oh, for the one brief game, yeah. moment of ecstasy when you're on a game show. Yeah, yeah the, the app. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're going to see a lot of opportunities for that. And I think that's the thing is I think everybody needs to be thinking, you know, future forward. And and part of what we're seeing happening in the next year is stuff that was going to probably naturally evolve over the next decade to be honest. So yeah, that's that. I think that's, that's the biggest thing about what's happening right now, culturally and economically is that the carpets kind of peeled back and now we're kind of seeing which beams were strong and which beams were weak. And and we literally just saw it right now with the, with the movie theater chains. Like these are discussions that have been happening forever about first release movies being released VOD on, you know, rental uh, on day and date. And today it happened March, 16th it happened because that carpet's pulled up and the studios are like well look that's a very weak floorboard and we're just gonna kind of kick through it and we'll see what we can replace it with and now that that means that by the time we get back boy howdy is there a new world for movie theaters (laughs) like they got to figure out what they exist for and why they exist in a way that they have not had to think about well ever uh, uh, there, there's no degree of, oh, now there's 3D, and and now there's don't don't worry, we'll just keep making these kind of movies that'll pack you in there. It's like we are that this is 
I think people, they might just go away. Like the way that we know movie theaters is like, uh, it's just a thing that happens. There's just one around us, like post office. Like we might be, we might be done there. And so there's going to be a question on if they survive, how? What coaxes people eh, out to do? I don't know. That 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 that, that was a popular. Say. That's 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 like saying vinyl's dead, or or I mean, and certainly the the thought was that movie theaters were going to be dead with television and all that stuff. I mean, it's like uh, I I don't think any of it will ever go away. It'll just become increasingly boutique. That's uh, what he's saying. Yeah. Nothing ever dies. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that in in the frequency that we have them now, like yeah, I have, we have three AMC theaters within a quarter mile from here in Burbank, there are three, there are three AMC theaters. Um, do I see a year from now, you know, you know, two years from now, will all three of those be there? I don't know. I hope so. But I, I, I find it, you know, hard to imagine that, you know, and I, I hope, I hope that, I hope we bounce back. I hope that we have improved knowledge and whatnot, and we're not afraid to meet in large groups in public again. I hope that's my hope, but my fear or is, you know, yeah, you know, and this is the other side of it. Let's say day and date comes out and movie theater traffic doesn't move at all. And 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 the fears of day and date are proven to be overblown. And people still, when they want to go to the movie theaters, they really want to go to the movie theaters. And all the frustrated parents uh, who are like, let me just buy this thing. I can't. Like, you know, you could make it 50 bucks and it would still be twice as cheap as me getting a sitter. Uh, uh, then, then maybe that's proven right, and and these are just two totally different audiences. Either way, we're gonna learn some lessons. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because it's like I, a lot of times, like we when we go to the movies, is we go to the movies because we want to go to the movies, not because oh, this is the only place we can see it. Is you just want that experience of being outside your home, sitting in the big recliner and the big screen and the popcorn and all that. And there's gonna be a need for that, you know. And a day and date is sort of fascinating to me because it's kind of like. Like, you know, when certain movies come out, like, yeah, no, I don't want to watch it at home. I want to go see it in a the theater. I want that experience of being with other people. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's, well, and that's going to be the tricky thing to virtualize is the power of social proof. Uh, I don't know if you guys happen to watch it, but um, uh, they they aired the basically just the straight up rehearsal of, of uh, Late Night with Steve uh, Stephen Colbert. Did you guys see this? Uh, like, like no, it's, no. It's, it's him doing the show. And there's only 20 people in there, and it's all staff. And they they are saying, like, uh, the headline reads, they're doing it without a live studio audience. And then, like, halfway through, he starts saying some stuff that makes it sound like the idea is only just occurring to him that you think I'm joking, but we're just going to air this rehearsal. This is going to be it. We're not going to do the show. It is eerie and weird uh, the 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 pacing, the stuff that plays when everybody's laughing, and you can tell he's pausing for those laughters that are not there, and it just ends up being bizarrely hollow, and that's the part that we're yeah. gonna have to figure out. And I think a lot Pausing of those talk shows were gonna try to do that without audiences, yeah. and then yeah, well, all of them he, did it for a few, for a day or so, and then said we can't do it. Like Wendy Williams got canceled, uh, The View, like all the big shows. Man, Wendy Williams because would be hilarious. That that weird presses that button. That Oh, it uh, says applause, and there's nobody applauding. Yeah, right. Well, it, so, so WWE, uh, uh, they are not doing any of their live events now because they normally play to arenas that are, you know, ten to twenty thousand. Uh, they did their first show without an audience on Friday, which was just bizarre. It was, I mean, because if there is one thing that, uh, uh, you know, uh, these talk shows are still people talking. Right. There's an audience. There's a live energy that, uh, uh, you know, completes it. Professional wrestling is all about the audience reacting. And so uh, uh, as you watch these these wrestlers go through the motions where they're like slapping the turnbuckle, which is normally what they do to get the audience to like start clapping and get invested in the match. It is just uh, uh, totally crazy. And they're going to do another one tonight uh, uh, in on uh, on USA Live. This feels like a snuff film. <laughs> it's yeah it, it is it is bizarre where you know the 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 bit that i caught on friday uh it's a tag team match and then uh, another a member of another tag team comes in to screw with the finish and uh, uh they have to like joke on on the commentary about like yeah yeah i guess you just snuck through the crowd no one could see her <laughs> <laughs> but i i'm telling you i i don't know how long humans are built to hold out 
uh, for the solitary existence. I mean, all, all of the the jokes aside, I mean, I think that 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 everybody is really invested in in hey what say we crack that genome what say we get that uh, that vaccine fast tracked what say we get back to to uh, you know normalcy as fast as possible well no i mean uh, the the economy needs it like, like we we can't there's only so long that that you know businesses unless there's just a blanket suspension of like all right, everybody who owns property, you're not allowed to evict people, and and you know these are all just mulligans, and we'll just cut checks to everybody for all the money you lost. Uh, you know, every restaurant around me is probably going to be dead if this is a quarantine for three months. Yeah, well, and like, that's that's the part that I don't know that anybody is 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 or that many people I talk to realize just how short that fuse is. Like how very short before we start feeling. I mean, Every restaurant you go to is a miracle, and that's not, and that 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 doesn't, uh, uh, you know, that's Fridays, right? From Fridays to the boutique thing, to the to the the food truck, if you are making money selling food, it is you have you are at the top one percent of the one percent of what you do because you are able to leverage the miracle of location plus service plus quality, uh, just uh, in you, time you have, management. Uh, Exactly. You have you have hit that nail on the head. Nothing can survive. McDonald's, maybe. I mean, like some of these massive conglomerates. But even then, that is a confederation of a bunch of franchise holders. Uh, nothing can survive a significant period of time where they can't sell food. I talked to somebody at the supermarket who has opened up a opened up a restaurant, local one, and uh, like burgers, that kind of stuff. And I said, oh, are you guys doing takeout? Are you on, are you on Grubhub? It's like, nah, we're not on any of that. And this was like two days ago. And I'm like, I, hey, Gump- <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you realize that like, if you're not doing takeout <laughs> delivery is not your main focus a week from now, you're not going to have a restaurant. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what, I got, turned, just- I got turned away at uh, Chick-fil-A this morning. I uh, went to go, uh, it was 1031. And so I knew they were going to start serving chicken noodle soup at that hour. So I showed up, walked up, was turned away. They were like, go back, drive around. And uh, so they're doing drive through only. Is that? Yeah, that's uh, correct. Huh. And then, and so, and then yeah. I went to Torchy's because <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to sit and play Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, <it's> cr- oh, <laughs> I took me a second to get JC Calhoun's joke of the chat. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I wonder how fast. Uh, I just saw that uh, you'd pulled up a breaking news moment, Bryce. Uh, yeah, so apparently uh, France has just announced a 15-day lockdown uh, where, uh, let me see, I've got some details over here. Uh, uh, all non-essential movement to be banned from Tuesday midday for 15 days. Residents must stay at home. Punishments for those who flout uh, the regulations. Army will help transport the sick to hospitals. A military hospital uh, will be used in Alsace near the German border. Borders will be closed in agreement with other EU countries. Uh, the second round of their current elections have been postponed. No business, regardless of size, will be allowed to fail. Uh, there's a <laughs> what? Uh, there's a three hundred billion dollar uh, uh, amount of money um, um, package to support these businesses. Wow! Well, let's do that crazy startup in France, guys. <laughs> Better than throwing it at Wall Wall Street and then they piss it away in thirty minutes. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is this is to uh, uh, or this happened during the show, but Ohio, which was set to have their primary tomorrow, has now bounced that back to June second. No word if Florida, Illinois, or Arizona that also have uh, primary votes tomorrow will do the same. Yeah, that's that. I was going to oh, ask wow. if you feel like uh, the the. Um... Uh, the demographic uh, question, uh, because uh, Florida has an older populace and uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, they also skew more Biden than Bernie. Uh, uh, but then also they're literally afraid to go to the polling places. Uh, uh, How is that going to shake out? I mean, we don't we don't know. We have no idea. Uh, uh, we have no uh, I would assume that you are looking at depressed turnout. But also there's the question of whether or not it happens. Uh, and then at that point, it's like there's only so far that you can push this stuff back. Because the the conventions are in August, right? And so theoretically, if moving this back means that you are that more people are staying in the race, and they're gonna just try their hand when everything reheats 
back during the summer. Um, man, I uh, uh, I don't even know. We are just in such uncharted territory here. The 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 fact that this is happening in the specter of, or in the in the shadow of of an election year is just crazy. It's just nuts. And 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 not only to the mechanical elements of it and the who wins and who loses, but also for just the fact that like, granted we haven't really knocked this off, but normally once every four years is when everybody gets their dander up about their party affiliation. We've uh, uh, gone through an unseasonably spicy uh, four years of of that from the last election. Uh, and now we are here at the zenith of partisanship while there is like a an actual pandemic that threatens to kill all of us. So are you seeing are yeah. you seeing a reduction over the last few days of of, of partisanship? I, on tw Twitter seems like, um, uh, oh really? Because my my Twitter feed has gotten a little bit quieter, which is which has been pleasant uh, in that they're they're at least distracted by the looming monster. No, I, I I I have not. But then again, of course, my Twitter feed is curated for maximum outrage uh, because that's what I follow. But uh, no, it, it every for every uh, uh, for every here is a statistic about where we are right now with coronavirus. There is either a uh, uh, and this is why the reaction is great, or this is why the reaction is bad, or this is why the reaction from the federal government is whatever your take is. So uh, I I I see that is. That continues to be not only at an all-time high, but now with even more fervor. I will say at least that in in my feed that I can find um, within either part of the spectrum <laughs> just as much variety of opinion as uh, are we overreacting, underreacting as I can between the two. And so there are people on the left and the right both saying, ah, it's an overreaction. Ah, it's an underreaction. Oh, we should be doing this or we shouldn't do this or this is too much. So at least we're you know equally confused yeah and then by the way there's still this conventional like fight between candidates for the democratic primary so it's like amongst that there's the like hey also biden has dementia or birdies two people are too mean like that's that 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 also has not died down because you know before the the, the interloper came in this was their party you know they were having their own little thing going on and now this other stuff is kind of over overlaid on it yeah so um, in a positive view, I think that uh, for the long-term view is that when we had 9-11, we spent billions, trillions of dollars on uh, security, war efforts, things like this, which, you know, that's another discussion of, did we get our money's worth? Um, probably the answer is no. Um, but uh, in this, if the best case scenario from here is one, we don't lose as many people as we're afraid of, but we have a renewed attention on these sorts of things. And we pour a ton of money into, you know, like Brian mentioned before, is like the idea is to never have to deal with this sort of thing again, or at least mitigate it. So we're not afraid to be in, you know, public, be in crowds and whatnot. So I think we're going to see less problematic, you know, uh, I think we'll be more easy to put, there's more money going into this. There's already some initiatives from different groups that are funding startups and stuff, developing new health tech. There's a lot of easily solvable things like, you know, uh, uh, for like UVC ultraviolet light is pretty good at disinfecting a lot of things. Um, of course, your problem is, is you'll see stuff like these travel lights and stuff they sell to disinfect things when you travel. The problem is you've got to let them run for like 30 seconds because shorter than that, it doesn't do anything. It's a placebo. But there are things like this that could be useful. And you might start thinking about like, oh, maybe... Maybe when I come home, I put my closet, I put my jacket in a closet that's got UVC light that disinfects it. Maybe every, you know, I don't know if you guys do this, but everything I bring home from the grocery store, I wipe with disinfectant because <laughs> guess what? It's been touched by a lot of people. And we go through the illusion of, oh, I did everything I was supposed to. I, I you know, I did my Hail Marys. I'm fine. It's like, no, like microbes don't know. You know, they they don't care. If, if, if that alcohol, if there's not alcohol in that sanitizing wipe, it's still alive. And so... All these sort of things are opportunities to sort of develop technologies and things like this to prevent infection in the future. And I think that we lose, you know, everybody, when we start first started up like, well, we already lost this many people by flu. What's the point? And it's like, well, you don't, you don't want that to be your starting number. Um, here, we may have a point where if we improve this every year, we may see less lives lost through flu and other things, which increases the overall productivity, which increases the overall health, which means we can have a more 
bountiful future. So that's sort of the upside of this if we learn the right lessons from this. Yeah, I mean, forward. You know. Yeah, I mean, I went, uh, uh, I snuck off to the gym yesterday and felt very bad about doing it. Uh, but they like have all these signs up that's that's like, you know, we wipe down the machines once a day because it's it's the gym at my apartment. Um, but uh, here are wipes. Please wipe down everything before and after you use it. And it's like, that's a, a good policy, but also like we probably it probably should have been like that to begin with. I think we'll find a lot of these habits where well, like, we I mean, probably yeah, should yeah, have yeah. been keeping stuff cleaner than this. For I stop going to the gym, it's the air quality is the problem there. I'm serious. The air, yeah. your air quality there, that's going to be problematic. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I'm so sorry. I, I felt, I felt, I did, I felt bad on the way there and I probably won't go until, uh, I, I hate to meet the guys, but the problem is, is like, it's good. Like wiping it down. Yeah. But it's still like, it's the, you, sure. you get people sweating and shedding and you look at the, you know, somebody spends 30 minutes on a treadmill who has it. And you also get people who you there is the mentality of two people who are like, ah, I feel something coming on. I'll go work it off. And then, Gyms are right dangerous. Which I felt by that the way, way life gyms are dangerous. For, for any of our listeners, if you feel like you are sick in any way, the exercise is the last thing you want to do. Exercise will tax your immune system and will make will make whatever you have last longer and make you more susceptible to catching something. So uh, uh if you're feeling ill, I wanted to take a take a day off on that. Yeah. It's somebody said we're getting a baby boom soon. Plague babies. Hmm. That's it. I wonder. I wonder about that. 20 years from now yeah i'm a covid kid <laughs> i'm a i'm a i'm a wuhan child a wu a womb a womb han Woo baby womb han baby <laughs> something, <Woo> something. Han. <laughs> uh any picks i gotta pick uh another thing i watched uh i have not i have not watched the cartoon network series children's hospital but I did watch the Netflix uh, sequel series, Medical Police. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I uh, – we, we still have a couple episodes to go, but but uh, I have found delightful. Uh, if you enjoyed, uh, you know, Wet Hot American Summer and uh, uh, some of the stuff like that, like, you will love Medical Police. It is a send-up of uh, uh, procedurals like uh, like NCIS or, or uh, you know – any of the the law and order stuff but uh it's it's hilarious if you enjoy those those tropes being sent up and just a, a lot of madcap zany comedy uh I, I don't know if anybody does spatial comedy better than david wayne who directs a lot of these uh episodes where there's just a lot of just really 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 funny sight gags mm -hmm. uh that, that just kind of like come and go really fast. There's there's one moment in the pilot where the main character is uh, being alerted that there's a medical emergency, and she just kind of turns around and uh, you know uh, you know has some catchphrase of like oh like I'm ready, and then just kind of lifts up a hot dog and eats it and throws it in the trash and <laughs> you know one bite and then like walks up and joins the fray. There's just it's a lot of really really good stuff. Medical police. So good. Uh, I got a pick. Uh, I have I I ended up binging the I ended up accidentally binging this show as a new another sci-fi show. This is from uh, Pedro Aguilera, who was the creator of Three Percent on Netflix. Uh, he's got a new dystopian science fiction show on Netflix called Omniscient, uh, where uh, in uh, in this city everyone is monitored by these little drones the size of flies. And uh, crime has been reduced almost completely because the your drone uh, knows and sees and reports when you when you do something, and uh, because it keeps track of you all the time, it it the judgment is handed down to you immediately. Um, and the whole system that they have is the idea is like, well, it's it's safety, but it's also private because humans can't access the system. That's well, wait, wait, this, wait, I gotta 
Mm-hmm. Does the drone pass the sentencing? Does a tiny little voice go, and I sentenced you <laughs> to Stand down isolation. and prepare to be judged. <laughs> no, there, there's, actually, there's actually a scene where you see one of the characters get judged, and she goes into this waiting room, and there's like you know, 30 or 40 chairs there or something. And it's 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 kind of a visual bit of like you know she he she's told like all right please uh, take a seat and then she sits down and she's immediately called up because there's only one guy working the booth because there's no one no one gets in trouble ever ever um, and uh, it sounds it, great it <laughs> it's it's look it, there's a lot of there's a lot of dumb stuff in this for example uh, you would think that the company that makes all of this security stuff would have say additional cameras uh anywhere in the building but they do not which makes it uh turns out very easy to compromise uh oh. so it's it's a bit of a, a sci-fi thriller in that uh i also will uh give props to the english dub which is pretty pretty good uh i, I think it's okay. i think it's really solid so that's omniscient on netflix hey um hey ryan very very cautious provisional pick um i don't trust it look man rattlesnakes <laughs> Boy, they like to bite you. They may look real pretty, but then you try to pet one, and then it bites you. You're like, what? You done bit you, rattlesnake. But then it starts looking all cute again. <laughs> you reach over and you <laughs> pet. Anyway, I pet Westworld last night and uh, <laughs> uh, didn't didn't hate the first episode of season three. It was promising. Uh, yeah, like they did the one thing that I wanted most to see, which is be outside of Westworld. And, of course, uh, spoiler alert, they ended with a character saying, I need to get to Westworld. And I'm like, oh, God, we, we, we have to go back. Oh, you didn't, did you not see the after credit sequence? I, well, hey. it, 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 I'm not saying it, it's, it, like, it's, it's a, yeah. And, and by the way, I'm not cool with after credit sequence on TV shows. I already have that paralysis. I don't want to be stuck around for that. Yeah. Uh, it was, it's, it's a dumb thing that made me cackle, but it's, there's, there's one there too. That's yeah. worth saying. Yeah. No, I would do. But, but provisional, uh, eh, more like this, please. Less like <laughs> most of what came before, please. <laughs> Westworld was one of those sh- Like, I was very frustrated by season one, which I think I was very clear about because sort of the... There's cleverness in story, and then there's cleverness in trying the way you try to tell the story. And, and I, I try to lean more towards a clever story than I'm going to tell the story in a certain way, which which is one of the things that frustrated me about like lost and stuff. Like we talked about this, like, why don't these people talk to each other? Oh, cause then the season would be half as long or, you know, why are you withholding this information? Because every character should know this. Those things frustrate me in Westworld to an extent, you know, the first season leaned heavily on that, which was sort of like the jumping back and forth, et cetera. But I went back and rewatched watched season one. I've seen it at least twice, you know, enjoyed it in season three. And I, once I got past that and I looked at kind of like sort of, sort of thematic of what they were doing and all that. And I just, it kind of, it's one of the things I really appreciate it more. If I go, once I understand, I'm able to frame it go like, this part's going to disappoint you. Don't get hung up on here. This is going to drive you nuts. But now that I know that, let's go back and enjoy the rest of it. I enjoyed it. So I'm going to probably just wait for season three to like finish all the episodes, then go watch it. Mm. Binge it. Yeah. That, I, I think, uh, I think that show in particular, we talked about this on cord killers really gets a boost uh, from binging. I think, I think that everybody who binged it uh, tells me they love it. Everybody who watched week after week found it agonizing. Yeah, I totally believe that. Well, it's time for my pick and uh, boy, I got a lot of picks to choose from. Jeez. Uh, got to narrow down the picks that I have in front of me and uh, I hope that I can uh, not disappoint you with the pick and uh, you know what's great pens I found a really good pen <laughs> oh did you did did you get uh, did you get your pen or did you get a one because we just sold we just sold uh, some no, pens. actually I am gonna I'm gonna double down on this is I'm doing a follow-up pick actually because uh, it reminded me that was a while ago, I talked about how I always wanted to be able to write on my iPad, and I had the Apple Pencil. Like, I still have one of the first Apple Pencils right here and an iPad Pro. Never used it. Got it. Trying to write on glass with a sharp, odd, pointy object to me was not a pleasant, pleasant experience, and I'd sort of given that up. And then I came across uh, two things, which was the uh, Logitech has their crayon, the Logitech crayon, which is their own. Man, you're good, Bryce. Uh, their crayon, which is their own tool for writing, which I like that better. It's kind of more like an architect's pencil. It's flatter and easier to sort of handle in the hand for me. And then I got one of those matte surfaces to apply to the surface of my iPad, which gives it a different texture. And other people touch it and they go, ah, it feels weird, but it gives it this paper-like texture. 
that has been wonderful. I went through, I tried some of the other, like the e-ink displays and writing things. Was and I got those, and I'm like, I should just get an iPad with this material on it because it'll be cheaper and it will do more. And I felt like that was a much better choice for me. Um, yeah, I've tried, I don't know if it was Paperlike. I tried one of those. Oh, uh, yeah, paper, that's the material. So the Paperlike, that's one of the materials. On Amazon, you'll find a bunch of different. It's just a matte finish that goes on top of it. It's been great. I make notes almost on a daily basis, draw diagrams, et cetera. I just use the basic Apple Notes app, and it's been great. So Cool. That's my follow-up pick. Nice. Logitech Crayon, and one of those, it's eight bucks to get that material to put. And your iPad still functions. It's a screen protector, and you know it's been great, wonderful. So It's been after. Hey, look at that. Good stuff, everybody. Good after things. Good weird things, everybody. Uh, all righty. Uh, who's, who's got stuff coming up? Uh, we got we got we got that cord killing uh, man. Yeah. It's gonna be a freewheeling discussion. I'm really excited for it I'm, I'm sad that I missed last week because I I liked that there was gonna be freewheeling discussions last week, mm -hmm. too uh, uh, Yeah, I mean, I think that that new NBC thing will be the big story yeah. uh, Our tips for staying entertained while you're at home uh, Justin you'll probably got a stream tomorrow, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Tomorrow, uh, then of course, Night Attack. I'll be live for covering whatever, if there are primaries tomorrow. Uh, apparently, we're down to down to three out of the four that we thought were going to happen. So we'll see whether or not the other three continue to barrel ahead. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned, friends. <laughs> Until next time, remember, chaos is a ladder. <laughs> uh, Andrew, the girl in the water, right? Pre-order? The Girl Beneath the Sea. God damn it! The girl uh, yep, the coming sea. out very, very soon. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it one day. It's all right. Sorry. That's gonna be coming out soon. I'll have some more announcements about that, and probably in a couple weeks, I will be doing a lot of Periscope sessions to promote. Also, talk about writing because hey, if people want to write, yeah. happy to talk to me about it. It's a good time to do that. Andrew Main yeah. on on Twitter on Periscope. Uh, we'll have yeah. a... uh, JC Calhoun. Remember, this Westworld is the brother and Lisa Joy, uh, his wife. So it's a, you know, Jonathan Nolan's uh, scripts. Um, I don't know. I don't know what we've seen theatrically that's been Jonathan Nolan without Christopher Nolan. So, uh, uh, Jonathan. Uh, but Jonathan Nolan's a smart guy. They both worked on the one Memento, with the American though. accent. But yeah, he uh, he's worked on most of his brother's stuff. Yeah. But I don't know if we've ever seen just a, just a straight up Jonathan Nolan film project. But like I said, he's it's funny because you hear the two of them talk, and Christopher Nolan's got the proper British accent, and Jonathan Nolan's got the Chicago accent. That's so funny. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Same thing with um, uh, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Like his brother is two years younger and has no accent at all. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. <laughs> all right, everybody. We'll That's be back. With that would have been hilarious. Howdy, y'all. Hey, Ted Kissinger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Cord Killers with uh, Jenny Josephson, it looks like. Uh, coming oh, up great. In a few bits. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have Tom Merritt on Night Attack. So, uh, everybody tune in for all that stuff. Until then, uh, <laughs> say goodbye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Uh, 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 Could I be in the That's what happens after. Uh, won't you come in?